Hello again. Um, I thought today what we would do while Alfie's hiding in the corner because he's gone off to see his girlfriend next door, Zimby. Oh, hang on. Hello. I thought you might come back. Hello. How are you today? What you been up to? You go see Zimby? Where's Zimby? Go see him. Go find Zimby. Go find Zimby. I thought what I'd do today is um, I've been playing with the um, the beautiful um, skeleton saw, the limited edition one, uh, which is the um, the one that started out uh, as an inspiration from Richard Arnold. It is the Peter's Squire um, saw. It's so named because um, it is actually thought to be made by Mr. Peters in London after he acquired Mr. Squire's business. Now, um, Amy and myself have been looking into this and uh, it intrigued me when I got the saw um, to find out more about the history. So there's going to be some more on that later. Yes, Alfie. Yes, there is, isn't there? What are you crying about? Yeah. Go see Zimby then. Um, there's going to be more about that later. Um, as the research is done, hopefully an article. This is an absolutely beautiful saw and um, the shape of it, the feel of it, the weight of it, it's, it's, it, it just, it, it feels like an extension of my finger, and my arm, and it, it's just so beautifully balanced. I, I saw the original, there are only two in the world that are known. Uh, one is in a collection in America and one that Richard Arnold owns. Um, sadly, the one that Richard Arnold owns isn't a user. Well, it is. I mean, you can use it, but uh, it is so historically important that um, that it, you know it, it's rather kept um, as it is. So Richard asked um, Shane at Skelton Saws if it were possible to commission a limited edition of these saws so that they can be users. And I was um, I was so pleased when that happened because um, it's uh, it was a saw that I wanted the actual original uh, obviously much more importantly as a worker um, a Richard probably wouldn't have uh, let go of it and I don't blame him and secondly he doesn't he doesn't want to use it either neither would I so this is very much a I was gonna say second best but um, it's it's beautiful it's on par if not better than what I conceive the original to be. It's very special because Shane spent the better part of 10 months um, working on the research of the history of this and looking at the, the shape of the handle. Uh, most of um, uh, Shane's saws are actually rosewood and this one was done in beach and the beach is a really sublime beach. It's, it's, it's a it's not spalded, it's, it's actually staining within the wood. So it's kind of flame beach. Um, the staining comes from very, very old trees. And those trees, um, this one estimated to be over 200 years old, take the minerals from the soil, particularly the irons, uh, the ferric and ferrous minerals up in through the roots and they actually stain the wood. Um, but this apparently only happens after a very old tree uh, is felled. And this one comes from the, um, the estate of the Duke of Buccleuch, who is um, some posh bloke up in uh, North, uh, Northamptonshire, uh, who I actually um, have encountered before. Um, but this, tr this, this was found at Mac Timbers, and sadly no more. Um, and Shane took advantage of getting it so that this was very special. So it is beach but it's a very special beach. Anyway, enough of that rambling on. Um, it does cut beautifully. Now, I don't often do this. It's not showing off. It's because um, I'm crap at this. It's actually um, showing you how good you can use this saw, even if you're a complete novice at doing things like this. So I'm going to just mark this piece of wood, beach, just with a little flick on the on the far end and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to saw off the end uh, and then just show you how accurate you can be with this saw 
Now it takes very little to start it, and I'm hoping I'm going to get this right first time. But you just pull it back for one start, and it should want to cut itself. And cuts that hardwood as if it was a lump of cheese. How accurately? Um, well, I am, as I say, a bit of an amateur at this, but I think you will agree that that's not a bad attempt. A uh, little bit out in that direction, not very good that way, but as I say, I was doing that on the fly. If I had marked the, um, if I'd marked the um, piece of wood and taken a little bit more effort, yourself, I know, uh, to cut the end off. And say that wasn't even marked. That was just me showing off. See whether you can see this but it's near as damn it to the line in both directions and any error is my wiggly and show, um, moving forward very fast just to show you how it cuts but you can see how it cuts it is a beautiful saw and um, as you can see it's a user it is a limited edition I don't care I'm not putting it in a cabinet and not sticking it on the wall it is going to be around in 200 years time uh, as the Peter Squire was or 150 years time. Um, hopefully um, I will initially what's left of my life look after it as a guardian and then pass it on in the heirloom chest. But it's very much um, very much a user from my perspective. Um, there are only 50 in the world or there will only be 50 in the world. So again, it's not... <laughs> It's not really um, going to be very common, even when the reproductions are all finished. The workmanship is astounding. Um, it's just beautiful. Anyway, that's the um, Peter Squire saw. Look out for the article coming soon. Hopefully we'll be able to do a lot of... Uh, I know Amy's been doing a lot of research with the National Archives at Kew and uh, various uh, Gazette, London Gazette and um, the London Metropolitan uh, Archives. So there's a lot of information from insurance policies and um, uh, details about uh, the businesses that were around at the time. This is in Wardour Street, which is now a very dodgy part of London, uh, red light district, if you like. And um, both Peters and Squire lived and worked in that street back when it was um, a commercial area. And um, amongst others, there were a lot of uh, artisans in that area. So there's a lot of information to be um, obtained now that a lot of the, inf the paper um, copies of the archives have now been scanned and they are easily searchable. So that, that, that's going ahead and there should be something appearing very soon on the Unplugged Woodworker Group. And I think Victor uh, Cook is, um, is also planning to put on the WK fine tools um, website uh, internet magazine so it's, it's, it's something to, to, to look forward to as part of the original um, the old history of some um, 18th century 19th century um, makers but anyway that's it for today folks take care say goodbye Alf you're going to say goodbye you come up here up up Just up you get up you get say goodbye you like this one you like this saw? Yeah. Yeah. Good night, dog. Yeah. Beautiful, aren't you? You're my friend. Say good night. <laughs> Nutcase.